I've been missing the neon lights Trying to find all the places I go Hey, I am Ashley Hoover Baker, tasteofreality.com's gossip guru, self-proclaimed fangirl, and pop culture enthusiast with a sweet spot for nostalgia. You're listening to On This Day Entertainment, a podcast all about the greatest reality TV and pop culture happenings from today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Welcome to the Fanny Pack. In the words of Bethany Frankel, it's time to mention it all. Without further ado, for this week in reality TV and celebrity news, we have to begin with an update about Paul and Carini from 90 Day Fiance. This has just been horrifying. Last week, I reported that Carini and Baby Pieri were missing. Thankfully, they are both okay. Paul reported the missing, but in reality, Karini took the baby and went to find some safety. It's extremely terrifying. She wrote a, and it was translated, she, with the help of a translator, wrote a letter to her fans and followers explaining that she and the baby are doing well, and it said a lot of really damning things about Paul There was also, which is strange, Paul is the one who um, published a copy of the restraining order that Karini had gotten against him, which, trigger alert, trigger alert, trigger alert, trigger alert, uh, it seems that he sexually assaulted her. And rumor has it that she's pregnant again, and all of that is just fucking terrifying and disgusting. I mean, we knew he was scary and dangerous and creepy, but this is beyond... Um, some of the things that I wanted to note from Karini's statement, she said, quote, all this, and of course, this is with a translator. There's a lot lost in translation, so bear with me. Quote, all this past days, I had a lot going on. As the media showed, I had issues where the police was called because I feared for my life and my son's life, which led me to ask for help and ultimately be rescued from an environment that no longer was healthy for none of us involved in this situation. I'm getting the best help I could ever get, and I'm really thankful for all the people involved in it. I also thank all the people that worry about me for the support I have had it have been a big part of my recovery. Relationships are hard and sometimes I just can't be fixed anymore. I need this time to organize my thoughts, work on myself, and care for my son after everything we have been through in the last year and a half. And she said, thanks again. And she explained, oh, and I, this, this is important. She said, I would also like to state that I'm not missing. The police knows where to find me if they need me. This is a legal matter, not a, quote, media matter. That being said, it's the first and last time I will speak about it. Thank you all again, Karini. Oh my. I mean, honestly, at this point, just thank goodness she's okay. Thank goodness that baby's safe and they are away from that crazy man. Whew. Well, let's move on. Also over the weekend, I was really happy to hear this. And I know a lot of people are tired of hearing about Stassi and Kristen, formerly of Vanderpump Rules, but this was actually some news kind of regarding them. So, of course, the two of them were fired a few months ago after it came out that they had called the police on an ex-black co-star, totally falsely accusing her, and then bragged about it, laughed about it, made a joke of it. Anyway, I'm still really having a hard time because I love Vanderpump Rules. I love Stassi. Kristen's also a favorite, but especially it was honestly it was really bad. Of course, what they did was disgusting, but then just as bad was the way that they handled it afterwards. Neither one of them ever apologized to Faith, not publicly, and they had their publicists write some really generic statements that they posted and it was too little too late didn't feel real it was honestly just as poorly handled as it could be well I'm gonna say Kristen is trying to right some wrongs and is making an effort so you know that service cameo where you um, hire a celebrity to do like a minute long video birthdays anniversaries 
deaths, whatever the case may be. My amazing friend, Michelle, after my dog Tippy passed away, got me a Bethany Frankel cameo. I mean, seriously, that happened. Bethany knows my name and she was so sweet about my Tippy, but I digress. Um, well, Kristen, what I was so ex- excited to hear is that she's actually using her celebrity and putting her money where her mouth is. The Blast learned that the ex-server is donating a portion of her profits from doing cameo videos to the ACLU. And sure, it's literally putting money on a problem, but it's better than nothing. And seriously, what have we seen or heard Stassi do? Exactly. Well, let's talk about Monday's news. I did some digging because as you know, I'm new to Potomac, which is amazing. If you're not watching Real Housewives of Potomac, like seriously, there has been, of course, in the media cycle ever since this physical fight between Monique Samuels and Candace Dillard Bassett, ever since that happened in 2019, there's been talk in the media about it. There had been lawsuits filed against each woman by the other woman that eventually ended up getting um, dropped. But I did a really deep look into this case because since I'm new to the show, I was kind of in the dark about some of these things. I'm not sure how credible one of the sources is, but I thought this was really interesting. So from the show, from the preview at least, we can see Monique grab Candace by the hair, pulling her down, and Bravo's camera caught the whole thing. But as I did some internet research... Um, There was a source from CheatSheet.com that provided some more details saying that Candace had thrown a glass of red wine at Monique and apparently the glass broke or something because she bled. That's when Monique grabbed Candace by the hair and punched her three times in the head, which we never saw the wine incident that allegedly happened and we never saw Candace get punched in the head. So who knows if that happens? We're going to have to wait and see. But I thought that was really interesting. Fans at this point, from what I've seen, are totally Team Monique. But it's interesting because the ladies on Potomac seem to be on Team Candace. And honestly, like nobody's on Team Candace because Candace is crazy. Love her on TV, but seriously. Candace is just, she makes some real decisions. And I'm saying this when she had a physical fight with Monique Samuels, who now has a pet bird in addition to the three children that she's raising and potty training all of them. I mean, it's really remarkable. Um, You know, let's go back on, back to Vanderpump Rules. Also on Monday, we learned that Danica Dow from the most recent season of Vanderpump Rules, she's the woman who was the manager at Sir, and she didn't get along with the little guy that was new that got fired for being racist. Anyway, she's had some problems with physical violence in the workplace before. Um, one of the reasons I love watching her on television, she seems very, very temperamental, I think is a good word. We had seen her just return when actually we met her. She had just returned from being um, suspended for a while because she like punched her ex-boyfriend while at work. Well, it looks like she was just granted a restraining order against the same ex-boyfriend. I forget his last name, but his first name is Brett or Brent, Brett. And um, apparently... He had broken into her home in the middle of the night, brought scissors, and cut all of the clothes in her closet up. I would die. Like, I would literally... I I mean, when I first heard the scissors going into somebody's house, I was like, if he cuts her hair. And I, I think, like cutting clothes is like is and obviously like breaking into somebody's house like all of this is a violation but a woman in her clothes is like a woman in her hair it's all it's too much it's too much and please can we have them back on the show oh it's so messy I can't help it it is what it is I, I can't help who I am Moving on to Tuesday's news, there was a social media frenzy after Kristen Cavallari posted a 
photo of her and her ex-boyfriend slash co-star of Laguna Beach, Stephen, Stephen Coletti, to her Instagram. And she was like sitting on his lap and he's single and she's now single after she and Jay Cutler, the football player guy, have decided to separate. They have three kids together. That was called off a few Uh, A few months ago, earlier in isolation, and Stephen Coletti and Kristen Cavallari coming back together, getting back together after all of these years would be exactly the twist that 2020 needed. Gosh, if Stephen and KCAV got back together, I feel like the rain would fall down and wake my dreams and it would wash away my sanity. Oh, gosh. You know, those are some really good theme songs. I always talk about how amazing, and it's true, Unwritten for the Hills is, and how it's like one of the best theme songs of all time, which I stand by, but Come Clean for Laguna Beach. Oh, my God. It was so good. Hillary Duff at her best. I'll actually be talking about Hillary Duff later in the nostalgia section of the podcast, so stay tuned for that. Some really cool news, an update. I mean, the best news is that they would finally arrest the police officers, Sergeant Jonathan Mattingly, officers Brett Hankinson and Miles Cosgrove. I mean, arrest these people already. But something good that a celebrity is doing to bring awareness and hopefully justice to Breonna Taylor What Oprah did is that she bought billboards demanding justice for Brianna in Kentucky. In the billboard, it demanded that the police involved in the murder be arrested and charged. And good at you, Oprah. This is exactly what people should be doing. This should be something that is in the forefront of our priorities as a nation. (sighs) Ah. On Wednesday, I released an exclusive interview that I did with Ali Ashuri. He joined me again on the podcast. I talked to him earlier this year, and we continued our Shaws of Sunset conversation. We talked about what happened at the end of the season, the reunion we wrapped up. We talked about all the cast members, where they stand now. Lots of questions answered. I warn you, it is triple X. Definitely not suitable if you are going back to work physically. But if you're a Shaws of Sunset fan, it's interesting to hear his take. He talks so much trash. It's unbelievable. And, oh, you could also watch it on YouTube. I uh, have a YouTube channel now. If you go to on this day entertainment, like I'm brand new, you guys, like I, it's not very searchable. I don't have it like all tagged and just like the descriptions are not great yet, but I have three videos on there. The Alia Sherry video, you can actually see us talking through, um, we had done a zoom and, uh, yeah, check it out. It's on YouTube at on this day entertainment.com, or you can read the article or listen to the podcast at on this day entertainment.com as always. Let's talk about what else happened on Wednesday, going back to the Housewives of Potomac. I thought it was really cool to hear that Candace Dillard Bassett is going back to school. She already has one master's degree, but she's going back to Howard University to earn a master's in business administration. So good for her. I love seeing people do things to better improve themselves and do do good things. Uh, ooh, oh, I love some gossip. I hope there's something here. They've denied everything. But the hunk Bradley Cooper, so delicious. He was out on the beach with Jennifer Garner, just hanging out, just the two of them. And that happened, the timing was just so weird because it happened hours before the news of her breakup. So she had been dating somebody that wasn't Bradley Cooper, so who cares? And then the next thing you know, she's on a beach with Mr. Bradley Cooper. Oh, she deserves that. Jennifer Garner seems like a really nice person. And we all know that Ben Affleck has been nothing but a disappointment. 
And as somebody who's always loved Ben Affleck, like growing up and just not really growing up because he's not much older than me, but I guess I'm just trying to say like I've been a fan of his for so long. It's kind of sucky to see who he is and has become or maybe has always been. Ew, and can we talk about that back tattoo? I think about that back tattoo at least once or twice a week. And it's not something I want to think about. It's just something that kind of haunts me. You know, when you're in that like half sleep where you're not really asleep, but you're not really awake and you just start thinking about things that have nothing to do with anything. Yeah, that back tattoo, that phoenix, that colorful phoenix, it haunts me. Speaking of things that haunt me, oh my God, did you guys see the outfits for the Real Housewives of New York reunion? The women look stunning, but Ramona photographed herself wearing this like clear face mask that was in the exact shape as Hannibal Lecter's. It was so creepy and so amazing. Oh my gosh. Well, those women looked amazing. Tinsley comes back. She's in a ball gown, of course. The women are all wearing black. Luann looks stunning. Her body is beautiful. She's got these gorgeous diamond accents on her straps, of her spaghetti straps, and up the slit of her dress. Ramona does look beautiful. Very simple dress. Amazing. Sonia looks stunning. She's got a great new haircut. Very elaborate mask, which I love. The winner, though, it has to be Queen Leah McSweeney. The freshman housewife looked banging AF. She's wearing this sheer mask, these sheer fingerless gloves that go pretty high up her arm, like definitely past her elbows stunning honestly all the women look great uh Dorinda's dress was definitely a miss she's the only one who I didn't think looked great I mean she's a very attractive woman I mean she looked great but just the outfit wasn't great but I can't wait they're the first show on Bravo to film in person again well at least a reunion this is our first in in person reunion in months some other shows are filming and I guess they have a ton of protocols so hopefully everybody stays healthy let's go on to Friday I thought this was really good news the MTV VMAs are coming they're usually in September and rather than them just being canceled as so many things are which is understandable I think this was a really good choice. The VMAs are not going to be held at the Barclays Center as originally planned, but instead there are going to be various locations around Los Angeles where the show will happen. So I'm not sure exactly what that's going to look like, but I remember for years they've been doing these remote concerts for the VMAs where they'll have a band play at a rooftop of another building and they'll just video them there and they'll have several different performers do that. So I think we all realize whether we want to or not, but this isn't ending anytime soon and we are just figuring out how we're going to keep on living our lives because we don't really have a choice. Oh, wow. Uh, Selling Sunset came out Friday morning at midnight. I woke up in the middle of the night and like could not go back to bed knowing Selling Sunset was on. So like I turned it on and watched like two hours in the middle of the night. Totally normal. Um, it was fast. First of all, the season's amazing, of course, but we found out exactly, well, not exactly what happened between Chriselle and Justin Hartley, but we did learn that he broke up with her. Not like broke up with her as in like they're dating. They were married for two years and had been together for six years total. She found out about their divorce 45 minutes before it was in TMZ and it was via freaking text message. I'm shook. I, my first thing I thought of was when Jack Berger broke up with Carrie Bradshaw on Sex in the City via fucking post-it note. This is worse. And I also thought, after a little bit more reflection about really bad celebrity breakups, I remember... T- oh, this was so good. <laughs> oh my God. Do you remember when Carson... Daly was on the Howard Stern show 
And I believe it was Robin who was doing the news, who is getting a shout out later on this episode also. Robin Quivers was doing the news and had announced that, oh, it looks like Jennifer Love Hewitt had has broken up with you. Let's talk about that. Or Howard mentioned it, whatever the case may be. And that was the first that Carson had heard about it. He heard about his girlfriend, maybe fiance even, dumping him while on the Howard Stern show. Whew. This is something that drives me crazy. Um, two things about Selena Gomez. One of them drives me crazy because, like, whatever. She's going to be on a cooking show, I guess. And, like, people who are actual chefs, like, talk her and walk her through recipes. So I guess it's like cooking for, I don't want to call her a dummy because she's not a dummy, I'm sure. She's a very intelligent woman, very accomplished woman. But I'm just saying she's not a chef. I don't think she really has any experience. And that's why the chefs are coaching her through. Maybe it'll be helpful for somebody like me. But what I am excited about is that Selena Gomez is joining the Hulu series Only Murders in the Building. She's going to star opposite Steve Martin and Martin Short. It's actually a comedy series, and it follows these three strangers who share an obsession with true crime, who find themselves entangled in one of them. Oh, my God. I just love the word entangled, entanglement. Thank you, Will and Jada. But, yeah, I thought uh, Only Murders in the Building sounds really interesting. Definitely not expecting that to be a comedy when I heard the title, but what can you expect from Steve Martin and Martin Short? It seems cool to me. I'm here for it. Well, that does it for this week's On This Day Entertainment news. Head on over to onthisdayentertainment.com to read the full articles for this piping hot tea and more. I'll be right back with this week's nostalgic look back in entertainment history. So stay tuned. Welcome back, Fanny Pack. It's always been fascinating for me to see how the world of entertainment has evolved over the years. But before we do, I wanted to remind you of the amazing deal you can get thanks to Curl Bible. I have been using their acne bar. It's an anti-acne bar. I mean, why would I buy a bar that would give me acne? That's insane. <laughs> Curl Bible has an amazing anti-acne bar that I've been using for at least a month now and my skin feels so much better. I've had so many acne issues over the years. They've not really gone away even at 40, but it's definitely calmed down and I would definitely say there's a lot less inflammation and redness on my face. And at this point, I'm going to take anything that I can get. So I'm very excited to start incorporating more products from CoralBible.com into my regimen. If you are looking to support a small black woman owned business, here's a wonderful opportunity and you'll get 10% off with the code that I'll provide. Check out curlbible.com. They have a lot of amazing products, organic, natural, responsible ingredients. Of course, they have things for curly hair. They specialize in black hair, but there are products for everybody. And you can get 10% off of your order with the code OTD. E10. That's because it's the code for Honest Day Entertainment and it's 10% off. O T D E 10. Get it? Awesome. Check out curlbible.com and keep me posted on what you think. Let's get to our weekly walk down memory lane and reminisce on some of the juiciest and most monumental on this day events from this week in pop culture history starting all the way back in 1960 the la premiere of the movie psycho starring anthony perkins and janet lee of course the alfred hitchcock movie This is the day it was released, and it was a total game changer for the horror genre. I mean, the shower scene is just one of the most classic 
when people think of horror, that's probably in their top five moments as far as imagery in a horror film. So classic. I've even seen, oh my gosh, it's so good. Have you guys seen the shower curtains? It looks like a shower curtain, but it has uh, a hand with of blood, like trying to grab the way out. Blood splatter everywhere. Amazing. Another horror movie, maybe not the same genre of horror per se, but in the year 1975, so turning 45 this year, is the movie version of Rocky Horror Picture Show, a personal favorite of mine. I mean, it's like one of those things you can't go through Halloween without watching Rocky Horror. I used to actually dye my hair with Kool-Aid in high school and go to the local movie theater and watch Rocky Horror Picture Show dressed as magenta because I was a theater kid and that's what theater kids did back in those days. There was no internet or maybe there was internet like this is late 90s. So the internet was a thing, but people having it in their house was still maybe not a thing yet, or at least not like a mainstream thing, or at least there was nothing to do on the internet yet. Like there weren't any, I mean, obviously no social media. I could go on again. I digress. Let's jump to 1992. This is crazy. Do you remember when James Hetfield from Metallica got those horrible second and third degree burns during a show in Montreal? He had walked into the pyro. So he like literally walked into fire during an explosion on stage. That was something that apparently had been practiced or whatnot. I'm not exactly sure what happened. But they were 12 songs into their set when James stepped into a 12 foot high torch of fire. What I think is badass is that 17 days after the accident, Metallica resumed on its tour. They had a stand in guitarist named John Marshall, but James Hetfield did appear vocals only and was back on stage in Phoenix. And I love that about James Hetfield. How freaking awesome. And just like getting back on stage after something like that, after like some sort of like that sort of trauma, he like was watching his skin boil off of his bones. Ugh, horrible. Uh, in 1999, Shakira recorded her first live album. And this is going to be a fun throwback. Do you remember MTV Unplugged? It Yes, it started off bands like Alice in Chains, Nirvana, but eventually, or maybe it did start off with more variety of music. Maybe that's just kind of what I listened to at the time. I don't know. But in 99, Shakira recorded her MTV Unplugged. And from what I remember, I just looked at the song tracks that were um, recorded on this Unplugged special, and they were all in Spanish. So I didn't know any of them, but maybe I would if I heard them. I just thought that was really cool. And I forgot how long Shakira has been around for. It's crazy. I think we're about the same age. I think she's about my age, about 40. I might be wrong. Well, in 2001... I definitely remember this. After 10 years of marriage, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman divorced. It was one of those weird marriages that never really made sense. This is before we had really known how deeply into Scientology Tom Cruise was. Maybe we did. Maybe I'm getting things mixed up. But um, yeah, they have some adopted children. Actually, I think, gosh, I really should have read more about them. I don't know why I ever really paid attention to Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. I think she's stunning and so talented. And I've loved Tom Cruise's movies, but I just, I've never really gotten into him as a celebrity. He's always given me really weird vibes. So I guess that's why I'm definitely not up to speed on this but of course that one ended in divorce and Nicole Kidman has of course moved on with that like country singer guy who I can't think of his name right now and Tom Cruise has been with Penelope Cruz of course Katie Holmes ah what can you do speaking of a this is a crazy Hollywood marriage 2002 is the year that 
Nicolas Cage married Lisa Marie Presley, of course, Elvis's daughter, and they were married on the big island of Hawaii. They were married for a grand total of three and a half months before Lisa Marie filed for divorce. Again, only in Hollywood. But here we go. I'm going for the three in a row, three breakups in a row. Hey, I don't make the news. In 2007, Christina Applegate, oh my God, so amazing. If you guys have not watched Dead to Me on Netflix, get it together. It's two seasons. It goes really fast. They're only like 30 minute episodes. I think there's only 10 episodes per season. It is one of the better like sitcom drama type things that I've watched in a really long time. Loved it. Christina Applegate, amazing. Anyway, in 2007 is when she divorced from that really cute actor, Jonathan Shaish. He was in that movie, That Thing You Do. He's like the really dark, handsome guy. I think he was maybe the lead singer. It's been a while. And he was actually in that movie that Christina Applegate starred in with Cameron Diaz and Selma Blair called The Sweetest Thing. He was the guy who hit on Christina Applegate at the beginning of the movie in the nightclub thing. Oh, yeah, that would ended up being her husband. Or I think that actually uh, was filmed while they were married. Anyway, their marriage lasted an entire four years, and they split due to irreconcilable differences. It's, it's a lot of divorce. It's a lot of divorce. This one was really sad. In 2008, Isaac Hayes died. He was the composer, the musician from Shaft. I really know him as Chef from South Park. He was 65 years old, died of a stroke. And it was crazy because this is when South Park, well, and I guess South Park is still on, if I'm not mistaken, but it was still really, really popular in 2008. So to have one of the more important characters die was really unfortunate. And I know he's contributed a lot over the years. So rest in peace, Isaac Hayes. Um, yeah, this, it feels icky, but it's just what it is. In 2010, it would be the 10th year anniversary of Hilary Duff and the retired Canadian ice hockey player, Mike Comrie, I think is his name. They had gotten married in Montecito, California, which is like the fanciest place ever. I went to Montecito probably like a decade ago. I had a friend renting a house there. Oh my gosh, like Oprah lives there, the creme de la creme. I mean, it is bougie AF. Definitely not a place I could afford on a regular basis. Not for people like me. Like we drove like in our like Saturn or something at the time. Definitely stuck out. Anyway, they were married in Montecito, but sadly, after six years of marriage, they divorced. Hillary is married again And I'm not sure about the sports guy because I don't even know who he is anyway. In 2011, Brooke Burke got married to... Oh, and Brooke Burke, if you guys don't know who Brooke Burke is, oh my gosh, you guys missed out in the late 90s, early 2000s. I remember watching Wild On on E! all the time. This was the host, Brooke Burke, this beautiful brunette who would go and travel to these exotic places and you would see her like doing these adventures, going night clubbing, doing fishing, physical activities, just anything that you would do on this to this destination. She was there. I loved Wild On so much. Well, when she was 40, she married David Charvet, I think is how you say it. He was on Baywatch. They got married, but unfortunately, here we are again. The couple shares two kids, but sadly divorced. They agreed to joint physical and legal custody of the 12-year-old and 13-year-old at the time. Neither one of them are to legally pay child support or spousal support. So apparently that was in the prenup or there was no prenup. Either way, probably better off that way. Clean cut, I guess, except for the fact that they share children. So I guess it's not that clean, but hopefully they get along because that makes a big ass difference in a kid's life. And somebody who was a former teacher, it makes a big difference in their teacher's lives too because that really fucking sucks. 
2012, oh my gosh, this has been a really dark week. This has been a lot of divorces, but here's another one. 2012, Basketball Wives. That have you, have you guys ever watched Basketball Wives? This isn't one of my reality shows, but several people who I really respect their reality TV show judgment have highly recommended Basketball Wives. Well, Evelyn Lozada and her NFL wide receiver husband, Chad Johnson, got a divorce due to irretrievably broken marriage only 41 days after they tied the knot. 41 days. That's crazy. Oh, so speaking of dark, this thankfully isn't a divorce, but oh my gosh, I I don't think any of us really got over this one. In 2014, six years ago, is when we learned that Robin Williams had unfortunately committed suicide by hanging himself at 63 years old. You would never know that he suffered depression. Many people wouldn't know. So many people have depression, are battling that on a daily basis, try their best, are doing everything they know, and you never know what people are going through. You never know what happens behind closed doors. You never know what's happening in somebody's head. It was a huge shock and a huge loss to entertainment. He is one of the best movie actors, had an amazing career in television. Mork and Mindy is iconic. You just wouldn't think somebody like Robin Williams would be battling so many demons. And here we are six years later talking about his suicide. So that just reminds us to all check in on your family and even the people that you don't necessarily think you might need to check in on, maybe they need to check in on also. And I'm telling this to myself, I am the worst about that stuff. I was really proud of Miss Taylor Swift in 2017 when this happened. She had gone to court and testified that DJ David Mueller, Mueller, I guess Mueller, Mueller, whatever, he had groped her and um, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, he had like grabbed her backside after an interview, I think. It happened in Colorado. And what I love is that when she took him to court, there had to be some sort of monetary value of like representing the damage done to her. And to prove that she was just really doing fighting the good fight for what she thought is right and to stop him, hopefully, from doing something like this in the future. She went to court over a dollar. She sued him, did whatever, I forget exactly what the wording would be, took him to court for a dollar, but just to prove a point that it is not okay to grab women under any circumstance. So thank you, Taylor. Also in 2017, Walt Disney Company announced their plan to create its own streaming service, and that meant they had to cancel their ties with Netflix. Seemed like a really bad idea at the time, but hey, we have Disney Plus, and it's amazing. I was just thinking, we have Beyonce's Black is King, Hamilton is on Disney Plus, and all of the Mighty Ducks movies. I mean, in addition to everything like Lindsay Lohan, all of her movies, Lots of Hannah Montana in those archives. Don't get me started on High School Musical. And of course, like all the movies that we grew up with, like Disney-wise, those maybe aren't my favorites to go back and revisit, but I totally freaking get the nostalgia. Whatever is your flavor, I am totally here for. 2020 Disney Plus, one of the things I'm actually happy about in 2020. It's, it's been dire. It has been dire for all of us. Well, just last year, we learned that Miley Cyrus and her hunk, hottie hot boyfriend, oh, I'm sorry, husband, Liam Hemsworth, my favorite Hemsworth, a little aside, announced their separation and intention to divorce. If you think about that, since then, Miley has dated Caitlin Carter, the ex of Brody Jenner. That was like a really hot story for a while. Brody ended up dating some actor's daughter. And I can't think of who he is. But she's like stunningly beautiful. Maybe like a wrestler or something like that. I don't recall. But they both had really, really public 
relationships right after. Well, that does it for this week's nostalgic look back in entertainment history. For this week's birthdays, we mentioned the movie Psycho earlier. I wanted to give a shout out to Alfred Hitchcock, who was born in 1899. In addition to Psycho, he did The Birds, Rear Window, amazing, amazing talent, who we lost sadly in 1980. Robin Quivers, Queen Robin Quivers, may I add, the co-host of the Howard Stern Show. She's the one who provides all the hot news on the Howard Stern Show. I've always loved Robin. I've always wanted to be Robin. Oh my gosh, she has just delivered it for me. So hardcore. So many amazing memories. She is 68 years old. So happy birthday, Robin. Rosanna Arquette turns 51. Antonio Bandaras turns 60 this year. Happy birthday. John Slattery. Do you guys know him? He was on Mad Men. He played Roger. And if you remember on Sex and the City, he played the politician who wanted to pee on Carrie. I think he's so hot. Like, he's like, obviously, like, I have daddy issues. I am so into this guy. He's like, got like the old man, like, white hair. Ugh, delicious. Well, he turns 58, and I'll be honest, I thought he was way older than that, but that's all good. Whitney Houston would have had a birthday this week. Unfortunately, she passed in 2012. Probably the best singer of all time. I mean, there are a lot of people who people would say are amazing talents. Mariah Carey, the list goes on and on, but Whitney Houston has one of those just perfect sounds. Her tone was just absolute perfection oh some of my favorite songs one of my favorite movies of all time the bodyguard I've been lucky enough to see it on stage twice anyway Whitney Houston was born in 1963 the same year as Sir Mix-a-Lot who is turning 57 this year Another hottie that I'm very into, I I don't know how popular of an opinion that is. I know Leah from um, Real Housewives of New York is into him. Joe Rogan turns 53. He, of course, is the host of the Joe Rogan Experience, like the most popular podcast in the world. And I remember him from being on Fear Factor. Did anybody else watch that show? And he's a stand-up comedian. I've seen him a few times at the Comedy Store in LA, and he is amazing. Justin Theroux, another really hunk hottie Hotson. That made no sense, but I'm going to go with it anyway. He turns 49. Rebecca Gayhart, who I just love so much. She was born in 1972. She turns 48. Do you remember the Noxzema girl from the Noxzema commercials in the 80s? Oh my God, love her. She was in the movie Jawbreaker, but I am a huge super fan of her from her days on Beverly Hills 90210. After Dylan dated Brenda, after Dylan dated Kelly, he ended up dating a girl he met at the fictional CU, the college, California University, that most of the gang went to. Actually, all of the gang went to. Brenda ended up there. Oh my gosh, I'm getting off track again. But she ended up marrying Dylan and her dad went to have Dylan killed the night of their wedding and accidentally had her killed instead. All because she lost her cat. So sad. Anyway, Rebecca Gayhart turns 48. Happy birthday. This was weird on the same day. These three music birthdays, two boy banders. In 1973, Scott Stapp was born. He was the singer of Creed. He's 47. And turning 44 are in sinker J.C. Chazé and Drew Lachey from 98 Degrees. So happy birthday. Queen Tinsley Mortimer turns 44 this year, of course, from High Society, Real Housewives of New York. Just an absolute delight of a socialite. Who knew socialites could be that sweet? Love you, Tinsley. Real Housewives of New Jersey's Amber Marquez. Is it Marquesi? I don't love Jersey. I know that's a very unpopular opinion. I don't know this cast as well as I should, but Amber turns 43, so happy birthday to Amber. 
Oh my gosh, another Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth this time. Thor, the Hemsworth from the Avengers. He turns 37. Anna Kendrick from Pitch Perfect turns 35. Carrie Delevingne turns 28. I felt so old when I did the math and figured out that Kylie Jenner, who was born in 1997, turns 23, which is crazy. And Sean Mendez turns 22. So happy birthday to all of you. And thank you for tuning in to On This Day Entertainment, the podcast for all your TV and pop culture nostalgia and news from today and yesterday. If you want to stay in the know, subscribe to On This Day Entertainment wherever you get your podcasts. And remember to follow On This Day Entertainment on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. While you're there, make sure to join the Fanny Pack group, and you can always deep dive my articles at onthisdayentertainment.com, and that's where you can find merch, including fanny packs, t-shirts, tote bags, coffee cups. There are some new Real Housewives of New York merch in there also, live events. I'm doing an Instagram Live. I'm taking over Taste of Reality's Instagram Live on Wednesday from 5 to 545 p.m. Pacific with Bravo Breakdown. We are deep diving Real Housewives of Potomac, so hopefully I'll see you there. And you can also see me on YouTube. Search On This Day Entertainment. I have a few videos up and a couple of them are just audio. And there's one, if you're a Shaws of Sunset fan, you might want to watch the interview I did via Zoom with Ali Shuri. It was fascinating. Well, until next time, you are too cool to be forgotten. Later, skater.